All right, I wanted to do a quick video on Mars. I saw a article about five days ago about Mars, and I wanted this video also to include my thoughts on the Earth and the universe, pretty deep subjects, and also some of the megalithic structures we have here on the Earth right now. You know, everyone knows about the Great Pyramids of Giza in Egypt. Everyone knows, not many people know about Baalbek and the stones there. Huge stones in Baalbek. There are stones so many tons that we couldn't even move them today without great difficulty. And um, obviously the Great Pyramid in Giza, that is an incredible structure. And the math, the way that was built is incredible. Now there's a lot of videos out there that talk about this, but 13 acres, it's sitting on a surface of 13 acres, absolutely level, beyond belief. More level than any building we, we make today anywhere. The architecture of the building is also encoded with math. Everything in there, it's incredible. Now, who built the pyramids? Well, if you look at contemporary Egyptologists, they say, oh, Khufu built uh, the Great Pyramid. No, he didn't. All the Egyptian, ancient Egyptian structures that were built by ancient Egyptians have hieroglyphs, pictures, paintings, carvings, you name it. And they didn't, they weren't shy. They, they carved them, they painted them. They let you know who built them, what they were there for. The pyramids are void of all of that. There is absolutely nothing. No carvings, no paintings, nothing. And what has this got to do with Mars? Well, I'm going to get to that. Um, I think there is ancient civilizations on the Earth. Now, I just looked it up. The Earth is... 4.54 billion years old and the universe itself is 13.8 billion years old that's old okay and I just got done reading a book about God and how he created the universe and according to this book he created this universe 13.8 billion years ago with the Big Bang he created it and and Instantly, milliseconds after the creation of this universe we're in now, all of our souls were created. And these souls are destined to live multiple, multiple lives until we figure it out. And then we can stay in heaven with God. And I guess we're just, we're just all drops. All of our souls are just drops of God. And we're all here to experience life and report those experiences back to God somehow. I don't know if it's instantaneous in the Akashic Records. I don't know if once our soul goes back into God, then, then he receives all this information. That's how He, God lives through our experiences. He can't, and there's infinite souls all over the universe where we are not the only the people and the souls you see on the earth are not the only beings in this universe the universe is so vast it's beyond our comprehension and there are over a I think well there's billions of galaxies just in our universe and, and there's billions of inha inhabitable worlds in our own Milky Way galaxy alone. It's it's really beyond our comprehension. So again, let's go back to Mars. Here's my thought on Mars and the Earth. Um, Mars was an inhabited world just like the Earth. It was exactly like Earth. It had rivers and oceans and people that lived there. And these people that lived on Mars were exactly like us. And believe it or not, I think we are Martians. I think that they blew, they had wars, they blew themselves up, and quite a few people 
got into their ships, they came to Earth, and they started, they came here to live. Now, there's been countless civilizations on Earth in the last 4.54 billion years. Some of them were very advanced, and I believe those were the ones that created these megalithic structures that you see. They had these, a lot of our civilizations that's inhabited Earth in the last four billion years, a lot of them were much further advanced than us. And everybody says, well, okay, well, where's the uh, proof of that? Well, look at the metholic, metholictic, uh, look at the structures, the large structures out there. Look at the pyramids, look at the things. The only thing that's going to last is stone. Do you think the cities we build now out of glass and steel are going to last thousands of years, 100,000 years, million years? No. Now remember, a billion years is a long time. You know how many million years are in a billion? A thousand million in a billion. A thousand million years. That's a long time. I don't care how advanced you are, nothing is going to last. It's going to decay into dust. Dust, dust, dust. The only thing that's going to stick around is stone, stone, large stone blocks. And even those can erode over time. Look at the uh, the big canal in the Grand Canyon. Look at that. That was the water. The water eroded that down pretty far, but it took a lot of years. So back to Mars. Okay, Mars was inhabited. Now, a lot of people think that Mars is still inhabitable now that the climate isn't so bad and there is oxygen on Mars and you can actually live there now. Um, what do I think? I think the temperatures are obviously a little more extreme than the Earth. I think the oxygen level is obviously much lower because there's no plant life. I think there is plant life but it's very small and it's very uh, you know, microscopic or it's just not conducive to uh, for civilization because they wiped it out. They blew themselves up. Nuclear war and they probably had weapons that were far beyond nuclear and they just blew themselves up. They came here to Earth and built a lot of these structures and they just came and went. And we've had a lot of natural disasters here and also that's wiped civilizations out. We've had in the past we've had huge wars that wiped everything out and that's where we get a lot of the stories of Armageddon and just read revelations a lot of the stories are verbally told somehow from the beginning of time or beginning of other civilizations so that's kind of a quick um, thought on Mars and Earth now what is the story about Mars the reason for this video it came out, this story came out, okay, about five days ago, and, it, and the website is infinityexplorers.com. So, infinityexplorers.com, no dashes, no dots. Found the, uh, the story, and it's called Former NASA Worker. I've seen humans on Mars, okay? Now, again, this came out on January 25th, so it's just a few days ago. And here, the story reads out, uh, there are so many anomalies of our neighbor in the solar system that it seems like a book conspiracy to silence that on Mars there was and there is life and maybe more intelligent than Earth. Humans on Mars. It may be difficult for some to believe that such capabilities have been used by the intelligence services, but there are several declassified documents that show that this has happened. A short time ago, a former NASA employee claimed to have seen NASA have, <laughs> employee claimed to have seen human figures dressed in a class of spacesuits walking normally on the surface of Mars. While working at NASA at the end of the 1970s, she and some of her colleagues claimed to have observed a lot of silhouettes of people on the surface of Mars while monitoring the Viking 
mission. To protect her identity, the former worker referred to herself as Jackie, who revealed an incredible story. Talking to a former CIA pilot, ufologist, and also known as a popular conspirator called John Lear. Now, we all know John Lear. Jackie spoke of humans on the Red Planet as an interview in an interview with the famous American radio program Coast to Coast AM. Jackie says that NASA was responsible for hiding the truth about humans on Mars. The future missions to the Red Planet are a facade that for what they have been doing for decades. In other words, She's saying they've been going to Mars for a long time. Since the American Space Agency has in its power the alien technology that allows them to carry out these clandestine missions for many years. In that interview, the former worker said the following. That old Viking rover was moving. Then I saw what looked like two people in a kind of space suit. They were not the heavy suits that are normally worn, but they looked like a protector. They came for the horizon. They came from the horizon walking towards the Viking rover. Then we realized the strange anomaly. My colleagues and I ran up the when we realized the strange anomaly, my colleagues and I ran up the stairs, but they closed the door with assurance and posted a notice on the door where they said we could not pass, so we could not see any, so we could not see anything. On the other hand, John Lear says that NASA was on Mars in the sixties. He also states that, that space suits are not necessary since humans can adapt to breathe in the low oxygen atmosphere of the Red Planet. So John Lear is saying that there is a oxygen atmosphere on the planet right now. It's just very low. And uh, if you haven't heard of John Lear, he's the son of um, his father, I uh, don't know his father's name, but he invented the Learjet. And John um, became a pilot. He's a pilot. He's flown every aircraft I think possible. He's certified in every aircraft. And he, um, I think he's worked for the CIA also. He's done some uh, work for them. I don't think he actually, I think he just did some work, some missions for them. So, He's saying that this person called in and, and said they saw people walking around on Mars. Now, remember, in Roswell, there was a crash in 1947, and we did recover um, a spaceship there. In fact, there was two crashes, and we did recover an, an intact spaceship and alien bodies. I just read another book about it. And it's been, this, this technology has been reverse engineered. And we've, I'm pretty sure we've used it to go to Mars. All right, going on to the story here. In addition, some researchers are convinced that the United States and other world power, powers travel in space. These nations that have space fleets have created a kind of holographic shield around the moon to not allow anyone to see what is hidden in space. Will we know the truth of all this someday? Will we find a fault in the system that lets us see the great anomaly that Jackie could witness along with colleagues in the NASA, in the NASA space agency? Um, so what do you think of that? Do you think there's been people on Mars? Do you think we're there now? Do you think we can fly there? I will tell you this. I've read quite a few books. Um, I'll, I'll just mention two. There's one by Ingo Swan called, it's called Penetration. And he, Ingo said he was contracted by a secret agency, probably you know who. And he was to remote view the moon. Now, if you don't know who Ingo Swan was, he started remote viewing in the 1970s for the CIA. And he was a spy. He used to spy on the Soviets. And he was funded by the CIA for many years, and he was the real deal. CIA wouldn't be paying him if it wasn't real. This guy, and he had a team. The most recent uh, movie was the he who's the person who's the guy who the man who stares at goats. That's about 
the program that Ingo Swan was in. And Ingo Swan, in his book, Penetration, if you can find the book out there, if you Google it, you can get a PDF copy of it for free. Um, he remote viewed the moon and he found structures and people on the moon, mining on the moon. They're there. And also, in another book, there's a book I actually, I don't know if it's, I think it's in one of his books, but he, if you listen to his radio interviews, um, Preston Dennett is another person who can, he doesn't do it like Ingo Swan. Ingo Swan can remote view while he's still awake. He can sit in a chair, wide awake, and actually project out and go look anywhere he wants and still be awake. Preston Dennett goes to sleep, almost. Doesn't quite go to sleep, but he leaves his body and he can go anywhere he wants. And then he comes back. It's just before you fall asleep. And if, if, if I see, I really highly suggest you buy his book and read it. It's called Auto, Out of Body Exploring by Preston Dennett. You want to buy that book. You want to read it. Preston's one of the nicest guys um, you'll ever meet. Unbelievable guy. He has remote viewed the moon. He went up there. He found a secret uh, government-like building where they were doing horrific experiments up there. And these, and it's some kind of a being, and this being actually noticed it was him. And I don't want to give it away too much. I want you to buy the book, actually, because Preston, you know, he doesn't make a lot of money off his books, but he makes a little bit and helps him survive. Everybody has to pay bills. He's actually written quite a few books on UFOs, but I enjoy his books on out-of-body traveling. And he's got a new book coming out. I can't wait. I'm going to buy it as soon as it's available, but he, it's not available yet. But buy his old book. Get it now. It's amazing. And he talks about the moon visit in there. Um, so getting back to that. Are there structures on the moon and people and mining? And yes, I believe, I believe there are, and I believe there is a very low atmosphere on the moon. Um, do I believe the Apollo 11 was real? I don't. I don't believe that that was real. Do I believe that the United States government and others have flown craft of some kind to the moon? Yes, I do. It's all secret. It's all secret. So, have they went to Mars? I think so. And this person came forward and just basically, she accidentally saw something she shouldn't have. People walking around on the Mars. Mars was just like Earth, so I believe it's the same. So that's the story. Former NASA worker, I've seen humans on Mars. There's people up there. There's a lot of everything. Most of what's in Mars is underground. That way they can survive. Now, I've actually read other books where there are, the there are some of the original civilization that lived on Mars underground. They still exist. Could be true. I don't know. What do you think? Put it in the comments. Do you think that there's a civilization on Mars right now? Do you believe we went to Mars? We're going there now? Do you have any inside information? I'd really like to uh, read it in the comments. You can do it anonymously. Go ahead, put your comments in. I'd really appreciate it. And if you haven't yet, subscribe. Like this video or dislike it. If you don't like it, put an explanation in why. And I hope everybody has a great evening. And may God bless every one of you out there. Take care. This is Chemtrails MN signing off.